Thank you for your invitation, in especial to Dr. López Ibor, who has been a mentor for me. Penetrating vascular trauma to head and neck is a serious injury, and medical treatment is not advisable. To start this lecture, I would like to go over vascular surgery for penetrating vascular injuries of the neck. In this report, in Austria, 17 patients underwent open surgery caused by different weapons. The mortality was 11.8%. The second report on open surgery was done in Russia, in Chechnya War. 46 patients who had extracranial carotid artery injury, of which 27 for mass missile attempt, and 11 were stabbed. Out of nine patients with carotid ligation, reported 100% of poor of outcomes. Out of 37 patients with carotid artery repair, reported 30% of poor outcomes. About endovascular treatment, there are a few reports. Let me show you two reports in which a considerable number of patients were collected. The first one, 48 patients for missile attempts during Operation Iraqi Freedom were treated. The mortality was 8.5%. In another report in South Africa, 52 patients were stabbed. The morbidity was 0.5%. Notice the big difference between gunshot wounds and knife injury. The first report done in Medellin, Colombia, about the endovascular treatment of penetrating injury of vertebral artery we didn't have any complications in 18 patients. It was published in American Journal of Neuroradiology in 2008. We were also published in Journal Vascular Interventional Radiology in 2011. One fatal complication occurred in a patient who had a pseudoneurysm in the origin of the carotid external artery by gunshot. After sacrifice the external carotid artery, the patient suffered a thromboembolic event. In that time, we had only streptokinase. Low doses led to severe hemorrhage of the mouth and diet. Our teaching point is to avoid occlusion of the external carotid artery before thyroid artery, because it leads to a stagnation and liability forming a clot. The endovascular approach has been considered for zone one and zone three. In zone two, surgical exploration is recommendable. Two examples of the vascular injuries in zone one. In this case, the huge pseudoneurysm by gunshot were treated with balloon spandle cover stent. This patient presented with a high jugular circulation fistula, was treated with a balloon and coils by arterial and Bino's approach. Five important considerations should be taken into account about penetrating vascular injuries of the head and neck. The most informative examination seems to be CTA. CTA is recommended in diagnostic exploration of hemodynamically stable patients' lessons, lesions. The other use of CTA is to show the wound trajectory. In this case, 20 days after injury, showed a vertebral pseudoneurysm. There is a huge difference between blunt and penetrating trauma. Blunt, carotid, and vertebral artery injury is, medica is medically treated. Stabbings have lower surrounding tissue injury in contrast to high-powered shotgun. In this case, the patient presented a little stroke caused by blunt trauma. The medical treatment with anticoagulation for three months cured the injury. 
In this case, the gunshot di dissection was treated medically. Three months follow up by anticoagulation showed growth into pseudoneurysm, so was treated by self-expanding and cover stent. This slide shows destruction. The firearms can lead to an extensive vascular damage caused by the blast way of the projectile. In these patients, all the attention was put on uncontrollable venous bleeding of right sigmoid sinus. Glueembolization was performed. The internal carotid artery dissection was observed, and after one month follow-up, MRI showed the right carotid artery occlusion. The teaching point, it, the teaching point, it seems advisable to use endovascular treatment, no conservative treatment, for potential complications of gunshot lesions. Devastating consequences after gunshot at the school base. Hemispheric infarct, which required descompressive craniectomy. Posteriorly, carotid cavernous fistula appeared. Stroke mechanism. This patient was discharged after suffering an attempt by gunshot four years before without any complaints. Unfortunately, this patient presented 12 hours after thrombolytic event, and thrombolytic therapy was contraindicated. This patient suffered many thrombolytic strokes in vertebral vascular territory caused by stabbings, resulting in pseudoneurysm. Assessment collateral circulation. This slide shows left vertebral and carotid artery occlusion in acute setting but good collateral circulation through the communicating arteries. You can see the carotid common artery occlusion, but good collateral circulation by occipital artery. In this slide, good collateral circulation through ophthalmic artery during ballon test occlusion of internal carotid artery. The subclavian steel, we can assume that there is a good collateral circulation. It shows a good collateral circulation through the ascending cervical artery to the vertebral artery. In this picture, you can see after sacrifice the maxillar artery, good collateral circulation through the facial artery. Lucky and lucky patients. On this slide, the patient was cleaning the gun and it went off accidentally. We can see shotgun shell at the school and no vascular damage. This patient suffered a wound in a murder attempt and no vascular damage. This patient suffered a gunshot on his face and one metal fragment embolized to the origin of ICA to superior division of the MCA. In this case, what would you have done? Medellin is the second largest city in Colombia. It has nearly three million people. We are seven interventional neuroradiologists and four interventional neurosurgeons. This is Fernando Botero Plaza in Medellin downtown, a famous painter and a sculptor. Let me show you our experience in endovascular treatment of 94 patients who suffered vascular injury in head and neck vessels. The majority of patients were male, and gunshot was the most common injury mechanism. Fistula and pseudoneurysms were the most common lesions. The most injured vessels are the carotid arteries, 73%, and followed by vertebral artery in, two, in 22%. The most common material used was the balloon, because sacrifice in emergency setting is the best treatment choice. In the 25 lesions of the ECA, just one fatal complication occurred. The most common lesion was pseudoneurysm, and the treatment choice was sacrifice. When you need to sacrifice the external carotid artery, you should avoid occluding the superior thyroid artery to prevent forming clots from the stump. 
In this case, there was, there was unsuccessful coil embolization. For that reason, we performed selective embolization with glue, and it worked. Another modality of treatment in superficial pseudoneurysm is percutaneous thrombin. Works. These patients underwent external carotid artery ligation. It didn't work. Bino's approach with different devices works. In this case, after many materials and arterial embolizations, Bino's approach works. Speaking of vertebral artery injuries, there were no treatment complications. 91 were fistulas, and the majority of treatment were sacrificed. I began using balloon in 1996. I stay here with Dr. Lopez Igor. In this case, trapping treatment was performed. Right vertebral angiography show a large false aneurysm from the atrogenic cause. Occlusion balloon was performed. The last and the latest treatment to sacrifice is a plaster device. It's very easy and fast. In this patient, contralateral vertebral artery approach was performed with coils. In the next two cases, I use a balloon expandil cover stand to respect the vertebral artery. After one year follow-up, it showed non-asymptomatic occlusion. In these patients, two Justin graft were used to repair the fistula and the diasection. There were 16 internal carotid artery injuries. In this territory, there were no treatment complications. The most used device was a stent because it's not recommendable to sacrifice these vessels. We used carotid wall stent in 2003 in Colombia. It showed the stagnation after the deployment in a chronic lesion. In acute bleeding, the best treatment for internal carotid pseudoneurysm is self-expanding cover stent. But in this moment, it wasn't available. So self-expanding and cover stent-assisted coiling was performed. And the external carotid pseudoneurysm were, was treated with a bioplaster. Arterial dissection with pseudoneurysm were identified in this patient. You can see that the self-expanding stent opened the artery and moved aside the fragment. Out of 21 carotid cavernous fistulas, 18 were caused by gunshot. The carotid was respected in only five cases, as there was extensive vascular damage from the blast of the firearm projectile. Firearm projectile. In most of the treatment used the sacrifice the vessels. Ballon were used. Out of 21 carotid cavernous fistula, 16 were treated with balloon. In this patient, the fistula grow up and pseudoneurysm disappear in one year follow-up. In this case, for the occlusion of left ICA, B nose, ipsilateral and contralateral arterial approach was performed with coils. Nine carotid bull and common carotid artery injuries were treated. Before 2000, we didn't have balloon spandil cover stent. For that reason, we use autologous vein cover stent and works. This is the follow-up, six years. In chronic lesions, the self-expanding no-cover stent works. In this case, we use Justin Graf. Mild hyperplasia with no progress was seen in the follow-up. The injury in this patient was caused by stab wound due to suicide attempt. Carotid wall stain assisted coiling was the best strategy for treatment. Pseudoneurysm of the middle cerebral artery. A six years old who suffered pencil wound passing through the orbit reaching the MCA. 
Jailing technique with neuroform stent assisted coiling was performed after three weeks the acute bleeding. We use oversized neuroform stent to allow the patient's growth. This show permeability of MCA. The lesson was cured in the 15th month follow up. Halba Shigachida and Hishima in 10 patients with chronic vertebral fistulas caused by different weapons recommended gradual closing for altered cerebral self regulation. In this study published in South Africa, a stent graft was used for penetrating carotid artery injuries. There was only non symptomatic occlusion from 14 patients that were follow up. In lateral wall aneurysm, it's important the inflow angle less than 90 degrees, the uncovered stent works better. This is the different brands of um, balloon expandable cover stents. And this is self-expanding cover stents. Out of nine, four patients in our work, 23 patients were treated with the stent. Out of nine Justin graph, one non-symptomatic occlusion and one mild hyperplasia occurred. Out of three palmas, one non-symptomatic occlusion and one angulation with required angioplasty were observed in the follow-up. The conclusions, penetrating vascular trauma to head and neck is a serious injury, and medical treatment is not advisable. When there is an extensive vascular damage, we prefer to sacrifice. Before sacrificing, we must do the occlusion test. If it is not well tolerated, a cover stent is implanted. In the chronic pseudoneurysms of the lateral wall, the uncovered self-expanding stent gave very good results. In a small vessel lesions, such as fistula or, or pseudoneurysm, we can do selective embolization with glue. In Colombia, like a Sierra Leona, is a uh, Hi, Bionis. Thank you very much, Dr. Lopez Ibor. Thank you for your invitation. The uh, there is a he has un coberto, as un, as a cover stand for intracranial uh, use. So maybe a good thing to check because it's uh, easier to navigate than the ones we had from, from cardiac or peripheral and smaller too for intracranial. It's, an, yeah, it's a balloon expandable. Uh, nice. And uh, the other thing is the, for you when you have um, these problems with the balloon test occlusion uh, for sacrifice, do you use assessment of uh, collateral? If the patient is in coma, do you use, uh, what kind of method do you use to assess? It's just anatomic or? Um, in, they low the collateral, the, the communicatings, and, uh, and B nose. Yeah. B nose uh, uh, delayed it, delayed it. If it's delayed more... Six, six, six seconds, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah, porque muitas, muchas veces es un problema, el, el trauma, que es, no están bien acordados, todo es muy difícil hacer voluntad de ocurrir a veces. Muy bien. Muy bien. Gracias. Gracias. Muchas gracias.